I'm joined by Mr. Ryan Hunter, composer behind the Bridge and Tunnel movie. What's up? How you doing, man? How you been? Been good. How are you? I'm doing well. We just saw a Bridge and Tunnel here at the Long Beach International Film Festival at Malloy College. Yep. Yes, we did. And uh, noticed your music behind everything. Really set the mood for the movie. Great. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. So this isn't the first thing you've scored before. You've done this in the past, correct? Uh, yeah, I've done a bit of scoring. Uh, I, it's really kind of weird, but I guess while I was touring, I, I got into doing some work for uh, for sports teams. I, um, I was always a sports fan. I was fortunate enough to have a few friends who went on to be media directors at a few different sports organizations. So I would say the most prominent would be the Chicago Bulls. And um, I did all their music for a while, which was really cool for a few years I pretty much did like anything that you heard in their commercials was all my stuff which was a really really insane and different process than writing songs but it was cool because it kind of schooled me and prepped me for doing my first feature with Jason awesome what was the process like when you first got approached to do the movie uh, Jason gave me a script, so he he pretty much wanted to see if I was interested in the story first, um, which was cool that he wanted my opinion. Um, and I told him I dug it. You know, I gave my critiques on the initial script, and I don't, I honestly don't even remember uh, at what point we started having the conversation about me even like doing music for the film. I think it might have even been like him just being like, "Hey, what do you think? I wrote this." Um, but I told him I was excited about it. And then from there, we sat down one day, had coffee, and he was like, you know, I'm going to have something to show you really soon. Um, what do you think about scoring it? And I was I was down. I liked the story, so I was down. Awesome. You've been all over the place musically. You've done everything from the post-emo rock to hip-hop to this to that. Uh, how different was it doing something where it was just basically instrumentals? I mean, it was great. Like, don't get me wrong. I I love to write songs and I I love to sing and uh, I love words and all of that. But uh, I really kind of like jump on any opportunity that that is something cool that I'm that I'm pumped on and I back and that gives me the opportunity to get out of my realm and learn some new things and be challenged. Like, it's cool. Not everyone gets that opportunity, you know. And I've always definitely always been like bored with the idea of doing the same thing over and over again like you know it's even when I was touring uh I started to feel a bit spoiled that I got a bit bored with it but I mean when you're realistically looking at it you're only playing music for an hour a night you know like it's really difficult and traveling if you don't have all your amenities to record or write or whatever then you're only playing music you're on stage playing a, a set unless you're you know the Grateful Dead or Fish, like you're doing your set for an hour a night. So, uh, yeah, I I relish in any opportunity where someone's just like, hey, do you want to make music, but have it be to my film or, you know, be for a, the background of a Chicago Bulls commercial or whatever. Like, it's awesome. It's really cool that people hit me up to do stuff like that. Definitely. Um, and you killed it, by the way. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Like something I always look forward to when you release new music, um, more than the music and everything, the lyrical content. Every song really has a story behind it, and reading through the lyrics is definitely one of those things I really enjoy after you release. So what was the mindset, really, with not having lyrics to songs as opposed to, and putting all that emotion into it? Um, I guess it was still really natural to me only because uh, I've been into composers and, and film and, you know, uh, just all of that for a long time. Even if I wasn't making it, I there's been plenty of, you know, musical composition that I've been into that hasn't had lyrics. So it was, it was natural to me to, like, give that a break. Like, there was never a doubt in my mind. It wasn't really, like, a struggle or a thought process for me. It was just kind of like, like, yeah, like, I'm, I'm going to do this now. You know what I mean? It, it, it wasn't really... There was no, like, battle with it at all. It was just... It was, if anything, it was a nice like respite and break from from doing that. Like I said, like a, a nice breath from from uh, from doing what I'm used to doing. Um, yeah, I mean, thank you for the compliments on my lyrics as well. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I, like I said, I en I enjoy doing both. You know, there's there's a place, there's a time and place for for lyrical work, and there's you know there's plenty of uh, stuff out there that. It, doesn't call for it you know there's plenty of there's plenty of music that i've loved throughout my entire life that i've definitely feel would be a different beast if 
lyrics were over it or a vocalist was on it and don't need it, you know. Definitely. So the Bridge and Tunnel movie, it takes place over the course of a year and takes place on Long Island. Were there certain aspects of the movie that really hit home to you? Yeah, I would say, you know, I've said this a few times in interviews, but I always, you know, I think it's probably the most important uh, element of me getting involved with the film in that the second half of the film, or I guess it's not, I think of it as the second half, but it's it's probably more realistically like 75 or 80 percent of the way through the film, is really what, you know, I identified with. You know, like, the, Long Island's an interesting place because we we live, you know... I can be on one shoreline on the South Shore and, you know, just drive an hour and a half and be on the other end of it. I can drive, you know, two and a half hours out to the tip or I could be 40 minutes over in Manhattan. Like, there's not many places where you can hit that many different, you know, landscapes and different, you know... um, different feels i guess you could say like there's not you know there's not many places you could do that if you're in the middle of ohio like good luck trying to find that those different experiences in a place like that so i think like when when things have gone wrong in my life like having that element of escape to go places you know and then scenes in the film where everything kind of went to hell for certain people and they do that like that's definitely something i I identify with you know I, i i spent a long time in a town called long beach here on long island and uh I grew up driving down there to surf. I grew up driving down there to hang out, to walk the boardwalk, to do whatever, to write. To I, I grew up going down there, and you know now I live down there, even though I'm moving soon. But uh, you know, I spent I've spent a lot a lot of time in places that definitely uh, similar themes appear in the film. So. Awesome, totally agree with um, the whole aspect of you could go to a beach, you could go to a city, all very close range. Um, getting back to more musical side of things. I believe um, it's being released with the soundtrack for the movie, which is all Long Island-based musicians. Then your score is actually being released on CD as well, correct? Well, I have no idea. Is it? I mean, that's that's awesome. If it is, I don't I don't know. But um, if it is, that's that's cool. That's great. <laughs> Maybe I'm jumping the gun here. No, you. I I I'm really like to be a hundred percent honest. I'm really bad at like uh, keeping up with that stuff. Like I. I'm, uh, let's be honest like the fun part for me is making the stuff like i'm i'm really terrible at getting in you know getting in touch with me after i've made the stuff you can reach me throughout that whole process and i'm really excited about it but everything after that i kind of i'm awful at so anything jason's doing he sends me the emails and lets me know what i need to show up for or whatever and i do my best to be here for it <laughs> awesome thank you once again for speaking with us once again is ryan hunter how can we keep up with you on uh, social media um uh, at Quiet Dog, it's Quiet with two T's on Twitter, Instagram. Uh, I guess if you search that on Facebook, you'll find me too. Um, yeah, that's how you can keep up with me. Awesome! Thank you so much again for taking time to do this interview, and I'll speak with you soon. Cool, man. Thank you very much. <laughs>